when they're on their train ride home, what are they thinking about? They're not thinking about what their boss said. They're thinking about how somebody made them feel. And on their commute into the office, do they feel like this is a place where I feel psychologically safe, where people have my best interest at heart? Chuck Garcia from Climb Leadership. He is a professor at Columbia, LIU. I don't know how he has time to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. By the way, how often do you climb Mount Kilimanjaro? I, well, I'm not, I've done Kilimanjaro once, but I've climbed. I've been on seven mountain expeditions in the last 14 years. So call it every other year. Now, I've heard from the grapevine that you sometimes take your students with you mountain climbing. I have. I have taken That's my wild. students four times to Mount Washington, New Hampshire, and sixth, which is the northeast. And that, not by car. They don't go with the car, right? No cheating here. Oh, no, no. They do not drive up. to No, they, <laughs> they, we walk up in packs. And I have taken, that's the northeast highest peak is New Hampshire. That's been a privilege. And I've taken my students six times to New York State's highest peak, which is called Mount Marcy. That is in the Adirondacks, and that is 5,300 feet above sea level. Part of the reason why I take my— That's going to be my question. I do that because I uh, want—the metaphor of the mountain climb and the career climb, I want them to be able not just to see it on the YouTube. I want them to feel it and to be a part of it. So we wake up at quarter to five in the morning Mm. for college students that are accustomed. It's brutal to them. It is to me. I love it. (laughs) We are are up before the sun rises, and typically Mount Marcy— at 5,300 feet above sea level is about a 12-hour round-trip climb. I want them to be comfortable in the discomfort and to recognize Mm. mountain climbing is hard, careers are hard, but why do it if it were easy? I don't want them to look at their future and look for the easy path. I want them to recognize that the growth occurs in the struggle. And many of the students, when they get up to around two, 300 feet short of the summit, it is the hardest part of the wow. climb. You're on hands and knees for about 30 wow. minutes. And to many of them, they look up and they said, oh my God, I can't do it. Well, the metaphor kicks in of set a goal, one step at a time, can't do it alone. Often at that point, we just get other climbers, we all coalesce, and we help each other get to the top and to the bottom of the mountain. So I, it is an honor and a privilege to do that. I do it every year, and I love doing it. Question, have you ever met up yet with any students that you climbed the mountain and now are successful leaders? And like it's, in, 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 in Hebrew, it's called nachas. Nachas. Nachas is that word that like, now I'm reaping the, uh, the pleasure and of, of, of seeing my student grow successfully because of what I imparted into him. Indeed. And in fact, in fact, I would say uh, one of my proudest students is, uh, I'm going to put it on the radio. His, sure. name, his name is Anthony Sicaranza. He was my student, and he now works at a small little company in California called Google. It, it is, it, he, <laughs> he, 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 was, he was not a top 10 student in high school. He's one of those guys, and he is, I think in one of my chapters is called the the power of the pause. And it's taken from a Mark Twain quote that said, the right word may be effective, but no word is as effective as a rightly timed pause. Anthony, if you're listening, you learn the power of the pause better than anyone. But to see Anthony grow and evolve, he climbed Mount Marcy, nice. to see him at Google, it is harder to get into Google than into Harvard University admission. And many of my other students are at Bloomberg and Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, and they're all over the world. It is such a joy because because that brings me incredible satisfaction because they all come back to me later and said, thank you for teaching us the communication skills. I see exactly the difference mm. between how to do it right and right. how to do it wrong indeed. It is, it is a wonderful thing to see. It's, it's why I do it. Now, I, I don't want anyone to get upset at me or all these emails coming in say, why aren't you asking Chuck about emotional intelligence? I hear I'm coming back. Yeah. Okay. So emotional intelligence we understand that someone who's been out there in the field for decades, so certainly they build, uh, you, you would hope, one would think, they would build a great emotional intelligent uh, quota or ho- however however that would be defined. Um, is it really possible to, to teach it to children in college, to teach it to to aspiring leaders at a young age and that they'll get it. It is. In fact, I, I, I use it in my undergraduate curriculum. I'm, 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 and to boil down emotional intelligence in its most simple form, there, is, there are four components to it, but I'll only speak about two. 
The most important one is this concept simply called self-awareness. And it's really about helping somebody understand, are they aware of their behavior? Are they aware of the second part, which is called social awareness? Are they aware of the impact they have on others when each of them are in the room? The vibe they give, the way they communicate, their body language, all of this is measurable. So we give all of our students a questionnaire to, to, to be able to have a frame and a scale. That questionnaire, let's say for self-awareness, is based on one through 100. So if somebody gets a 75, that means there's 25 utils of that scale by which they could improve. And often, and, and we have an entire list of techniques, and sometimes they're as simple as, before you're going to say something to somebody, Take a second to breathe and to think about that statement as opposed to many people in their quest to show their power, knee-jerk reactions and immediate responses without even giving their mind one thought. Could I answer that question differently? Because what we teach in EQ, it's not what you say. Because people will forget what you say. This is the great Maya Angelou quote, best mm -hmm. advice I ever had. People, and she said, I have learned that people will forget what you say, people will forget what you do, but they will never forget how you make them feel. This is what so people true. go away with on the train in New York when they're on their train ride home. What are they yeah. thinking about? They're not thinking about what their boss said. They're thinking about how somebody made them feel. And on their commute into the office, do they feel like this is a place where I feel psychologically safe, where people have my best interest at heart? This is where self and social awareness are measurable and improvable. It works. I've seen it happen a lot, particularly the self-awareness continues to improve by helping people understand the techniques. Mm. And it goes back to yoga, Yitzhak, of breathing. Just understand you don't have to answer everything in the first split second. Take the time, close your eyes, reflect. After a while, you begin to change the hard wiring in your brain that is so accustomed to the constant act and react of our, of our conversations. Chuck, is, uh, how can someone find out how they rate in terms of EQ? There is a great book called EQ 2.0 cost 20 bucks better best 20 dollar <laughs> investment i ever made they can buy it they take an assessment has several questions when, when the question is done you hit the submit key it comes back not only with your scale with suggested improvements here based wow. upon your eq responses and where you are on the scale here is a list of 5 10 15 things to be able to do and it's a great list and i practice them in my class so many of my students are grateful for thank you for bringing it to our attention for recognizing when they go into the business community it's about how others feel it's not just about that you got a 40 in college it's great if you did but that's not what people are going to remember they're going to remember how you treated them I love the honor of interviewing C-level executives and sharing their great advice and perspective on Mind Your Business. I'd love to get your feedback. Post it in the comments below and subscribe. You'll never miss an edition of Mind Your Business.